Good afternoon, I'm the Mono Wolf Historian and today we're going to have a small chat about NATO symbols. Since we have modernized the Warfare Room Operation series with maps and order of battles, and we do use NATO symbols in there, we would like to explain them a little and bring everyone, in case it is needed, to at least a very basic level of knowledge on the matter. We will cover mainly the symbols that we are going to use the most and in case we will use something that we have not described here, we will briefly explain in that specific video. Without further ado, let's get started. For millennials, the basic block of almost all military armies has been the common line soldier. These represent most of the military units, if we speak about percentages. Ancient historical example of these may be the Greek Hoplite, the Roman Auxiliaries or the medieval swordsmen. Nowadays we do not have swords, except in some cases cough cough and my white United Kingdom, but rather we do have, thanks to the invasion of gunpowder, rifles, and the soldier with a rifle is called, usually, rifleman. Riflemen combined create rifle units and it does not matter what they create, a platoon, a company or a battalion for example, as they all can be called with a single name, and that name is infantry. Being the Napoleonic era, the age in which, we do believe, military symbols started being standardized, also with the creation of military war games, see our video on the matter, it comes to no surprise that the symbol for infantry resembles the bandoliers worn by the common infantrymen in the Napoleonic era. The trinome of units in the Napoleonic era was completed by the cavalry and by the artillery. The cavalry is represented by a single line instead of the X shape of the infantry and with the lower triangle being colored usually black that represents the fur of the horse. Modern reconnaissance units are similar but the triangle is without colors as the unit is without horses. Artillery has a simple dot in the middle of the rectangle and it is basically like looking to the gun from the front, the dot is the barrel and the rest is the gun shield. The evolution of technology also brought with it some specialization of roles, for example, anti-air guns represented by a triangle with the point of it pointing towards the sky, anti-air missiles similar to AA guns but there is a curve that can easily be remembered as the range of the missile. Air warning units is the opposite of anti-air missiles and can be remembered as the dish of a radar. anti tank guns is a triangle with the point pointing towards the ground. Truck units such as tanks are represented by an ellipse that indicates the truck of the vehicle. Insurgents, this is tricky, we either represent it as three stylized men or we do have a symbol similar to the recon units just with the opposite line. Signal units, represented by a lightning symbol that is easily remembered as electricity passing through the antenna. Radar units, well this is a radar dish. Observation post, this is a small triangle, can be remembered as a small raise. If it is just an observation post, it has the recon line, while if it is an artillery observation post, it will have the artillery dot. Motor units, is a dot with an arrow that reminds a stylized motor. Rocket artillery, a dot with two lines that can be remembered because, usually, rocket artillery have more than one barrel firing at the same time. Medical units, this symbol represents a hospital. Headquarters, these are simply a rectangle on the top and it is remembered because they are at the top of all units. Logistical units, it's the opposite of headquarters, with a rectangle on the bottom as they are the foundation for all military operations. Transport units, it is a simple wheel. Fuel units, they are represented by a fuel funnel. Repair units, well, it's a wrench. Engineers, they are represented by an E inverted that also is very similar to a bridge. Bridging units, they are represented by the stylus drawing of a bridge. CBRN units, they are represented by two dots and two lines going down from them. They are either the representation of small balloons filled with gas, nuclear neutrons exiting the core, or a badly drawn bad face. Military police is usually indicated simply as MP, the abbreviation of military police. Naval forces, they are represented by an anchor. Fixed wing air units, they are represented by the blades of their engine. Rotatory wings air units, similar to fixed ones but the blades are like triangles. Obviously these are not all the possible units, but rather what is very possible that we will use in the future. 
There is also the possibility that some units may have been modified or have specific characteristics. In order to represent them, they have so-called modifiers in them. Let's see the main ones. Airborne troops are represented by the wings of a seagull in the example. This is airborne infantry. Air landing is similar, but the modifier is a line that represents the wings of a glider or the blades of a helicopter if seen from the front. On screen, air landing infantry. Naval units or units with naval capabilities are represented by small waves. While infantry is usually portrayed with the anchor, vehicles are usually represented with waves. On screen, amphibious truck vehicles. Motorized units are represented by wheels, usually two, and when there are three wheels, it is because the units have cross-country capabilities. On map army, motorized units are indicated with a vertical line in the middle. On screen, motorized infantry. Mechanized units are represented by the mixture between the infantry and the truck vehicles. Bicycle modifiers are made up of two small cycles on the right, while in the motorcycles one, the circles are filled in black. Railway units are represented by four wheels in two couples. Half trucks are indicated by one wheel and the truck, pretty straightforward. Snow mobile units are indicated by the stylization of a sled. Pack animals are represented by a M that also resembles two very tall mountains. Mountain units are represented by a black triangle that represents a mountain. Here we can see mountain infantry. The light modifier has a line on the left of the unit or with a small L letter on the bottom. Here, light infantry. The heavy modifier has a black rectangle on the left of the unit. Here, heavy infantry. Anti-tank modifier is made up of two small lines that represent the part of the gun that is inserted in the ground to keep the gun steady during firing. While a missile is often portrayed as a... I have no idea how to define this, so here you have all the various examples. Keep in mind that we will usually indicate the type of weapon if it is ATGMs or recoilless rifles. Harbour modifiers are made up of a big rhomboid figure. Training schools are with two small rectangles, one above and one below. Fortresses are protected by big walls, hence the rectangles all around the symbol. As far as planes go, the list of modifiers is enormous, and on screen you can see that list. I suggest you stop for a moment the video. You're back? Great. Here's the modifier for unmanned planes and helicopters. We will not talk about modifiers for ship as, for now, we do not plan on doing anything with those. Last but not least, installations are usually indicated with a back rectangle above the unit symbol, such as here we have a munition production factory and a vehicle production facility. Oh, also some modifiers may simply be letters in the unit symbol, like the ones that gives you the possibility to recognize if the unit is either terrorist or foreign fighters, or the modifier for vertical and or short takeoff and landing planes. Another example of written modifiers is for special equipment, as stated before. Obviously, different unit sizes must be indicated with different symbols. Enter the size modifiers. Nothing means unknown size. In case the size is known or could be estimated, from smaller to biggest. A fire team is a circle with a line crossed to it. The abbreviation is FT. A squad is a single dot. The abbreviation is SQD. A section is made of two dots. The abbreviation is SEC. Pay attention to not be confused with the abbreviation of SEC in security that are territorial reserves. A platoon is made of three dots. The abbreviation is PLT. A company is made of a line. The abbreviation is COI. A battalion is made of two lines. The abbreviation is BTN. A regiment is made of three lines. The abbreviation is RGT. A brigade is made of one X. The abbreviation is BGD. A division is made of two Xs. The abbreviation is DIV. A corp is made of three Xs. The abbreviation is CLP. An army is made of four Xs. The abbreviation is ARM. An army group or front are made of five axes. The abbreviation is either AGP or FNT. A region or a theater are made of six axes. The abbreviation is RGN or THT. Keep in mind that these abbreviations are the ones that we give, and other channels may use different ones. 
The units are usually indicated with the information of the specific unit and what it is part of being indicated next to the unit itself. In the order of battle, however, it may be common to see the description of the unit either inside the symbol or as a side note. Some usually indicate units that are temporary by enclosing the space with the size indicator, but here we will not do that. Last size modifier, very important, is used to indicate if a unit has been reinforced or has been reduced, compared to standard strength. If reinforced, it will have a plus, if depleted, it will have a minus. We will not always use this modifier unless it is to indicate a unit that has performed a lot of combat and has suffered substantial losses, or in case it has been heavily reinforced. This brings an end to our video. We hope that you have found this interesting as we plan in making a couple of more of these episodes in which we will explain how the military works. Thank you for watching and remember to use badly drawn said faces to indicate CBRN units.